we have to fight against the new Jim Crow. Y'all want to shout. I'm sorry. I thought this was the, the, the intelligent crowd. Uh, uh, while, while they had de facto and de jure segregation back then, do you realize that more people right now are currently under correctional control in our society than were in prison before the Civil War? I'm saying that to say that we're not shackled by chains, but a story is a lot of us who are in the prison system with that three strike stuff. If you sit here watching Phaedra and the Real Housewives, I need you to step up and answer the bell. Who's got next? Who is going to be the next Paul who will say, I became all things to all people so I can win them to Christ? Where are you at? Yeah, whenever it's God doing something for me, we shout. But when it's for us to step up and do something for God, we get quiet. Yeah, God bless me. God heal me. God said, lay down your life for me. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Give somebody next to you a push and say, stop dragging your cross. Pick it up. Who's going to be the next Peter who's going to have the courage to see Jesus and step outside the boat? Y'all too safe. Y'all too safe. Y'all too safe. Y'all too safe. You say you want a multicultural church, but you ain't ready because when they come in here, you look at them up and down because they don't look like you. The devil is a liar. You say you want the crack addict, but you don't want to sit next to them because they don't smell like you. The devil is a liar. Come sit next to me. I don't care if I'm in the front. Sit right next to me and let me hug you because my glory will get on top of your story. Where's the real church? It's a real church. Who's got next? Where's the next Elijah? Who's not gonna come to church and look at your watch and say you gotta run out here, but you gonna hug somebody before you go? Because no matter how good the preaching is, it's your touch that's gonna push them through. Who is the next one in my generation who's going to teach people that good preaching ain't style, it's substance? And we don't preach for YouTube clips and praise breaks. We preach for people to get penetrated in their heart, their mind, and their soul. Who's going to be the next one to step up and say, uh, uh, don't watch this mess you're seeing on TV. God never called us to be a celebrity. He always called us to be a servant. Will the real church please stand up? Will the real people who will teach somebody how to pray please stand up? Will the real people who are not going to be a customer at church, but you're going to be an owner, will you please stand up and identify yourself? Will the real person who will carry with somebody until they get delivered, will you stand up? Give seven people next to you a high five who are standing and tell them I got next. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Step right over the people who are sitting down. Step right over the people who are sitting down because I need some Joshua's to step up and say I got next. Scratch that. I don't got next. I got now. Now faith is the second. I'm done. Give me five and I'm rolling out. Last point. I hear you, I hear you. Last point. There is healing through humility. The trick of the enemy is to divide the races and the, and the generations. The trick of the enemy is to make it where fathers can't talk to sons. The trick of the enemy is to make it where mothers can't talk to daughters. Because the enemy knows that if I can get the wisdom of Moses with the strength of Joshua, that the devil can't do nothing with that. So I'm going to keep making it feel weird at your home. I'm going to make it feel weird when it's time to pray. How come y'all can't pray together, but you can watch this mess on TV together? I'm going to make y'all both so distracted with your cell phones that you never look into each other's eyes and say, how was your day today? That's 
the trick of the enemy, but you don't realize Moses needs Joshua just as much as Joshua needs Moses. The problem is, is that we have Moseses that aren't willing to disciple a Joshua. And then, conversely, we have Joshua's that won't sit down and get taught by Moses. I'm so glad I got delivered from preaching for public approval because I know when I'm in my, in my assignment. Watch this. For 40 years, Moses and Joshua have an apprenticeship for 40 years. 40 is a period of testing. Who's being tested? Joshua or Moses? Both of them. Moses, your test is, can you pour into somebody else who might do it better than you? Or are you going to be a Saul and when you see the anointing on David's life, you're going to try to assassinate it and kill it? Look at somebody next to you and say, Moses or Saul, you can't beat both. Either you're going to kill it or you're going to cultivate it. You can't do both. 40 years. See, Moses' generation, you frustrated because younger generation, we ain't teachable. Yeah, we think we know everything. You get a little gift, don't you? You spoke in tongues. You still wet from the baptismal pool, but you already got business cards and a website, and you're ready to talk to the nations. Sit down somewhere. You ain't even been hit with one good trial yet. You preach two good sermons, and the people shout. Now you're ready to start, y'all. Sit down somewhere. My generation, we want the product, but we don't want none of the process. We're entitled and we lazy. We think anything comes and you don't have to fight or work for it. The devil is a liar. Can you believe my generation? People before us fought for the right to vote and we sit at home on election day. A book I read, 200 pages for this one quote, so you better pay attention. It's called the post-church Christian. He's a bunch of generations who don't want to go to church, but they say they're a Christian. The post-church Christian dealing with the generational baggage of our faith. It's a conversation between a father and a son, between a baby boomer and a millennial about their critique of the ch current church climate. Here's what they say to the young people. He says, you have passion, you have creativity, you have energy, optimism, and fresh ideas. You have expressed the need for mentors in your life because what you don't have is you need wisdom. Generally speaking, you will not find that wisdom in another 20-something. Why are you getting advice from somebody who got the same struggle as you? Why are you getting marriage advice from your mama and she ain't had a man in 35 years? I got like 10 examples just rolled through my head, but ain't none of them PG. I'm just going to stop right there. Wisdom is collected through living and learning from both joys and sorrows. Wisdom is gained through the hard knocks of life. Somebody, a baby boomer with five or six decades of life experience can provide that wisdom for you. Don't tell me who you over until you tell me who you under. Yeah. Bishop introduced me this morning. He said, that's my son. That don't happen overnight. I've been here since I was 17 years old. I know how to take a rebuke. I know how to take instruction. He can't just be your bishop and your pastor when he's praising you. He got to be your bishop when he says, sit down, you need some more. Yes. You don't know what a good father is because you didn't have one naturally. You reject the one that you got spiritually. Yeah. And while Moses is frustrated, we mad too. Joshua's frustrated because all you do, Moses, is you showcase your strength, but you masquerade your weakness. 
that's the critique with the church. Y'all ain't real up in here. The critique with the church is you give your testimony, but you skip over the hard part. And that makes you unrelatable. Stop giving a PG-13 testimony when you know good and well you came out of a rated R situation. You so worried about your image, it comes at the expense of you having substance. Moses, you help me when you tell me that when God called you, you were scared too. Because I saw your greatness, but I didn't see none of your fear because you didn't tell me about it. Moses, you help me when you tell me that you got an anger problem because I do too. Yeah, you only read about the good Moses. You never read about the Moses who saw an Egyptian and killed him. Yeah, when are we going to have a, a masquerade party where we can take off the mask? Because everybody you preach about in the Bible got some type of issue. Elijah, depressed. Moses, murderer. David, a uh, liar and an adulterer. But what I like about God is the Bible is transparent. Tell somebody next to you, say, when are you going to tell your real testimony? Yeah, if you would stop being fake, there's somebody going through a real trial who can hear your real testimony and know that I'm not crazy. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You ain't delivered until you can talk about it. So the way the conversation go is, baby girl, come sit next to mama. You got a cute shape. You know that, don't you? Be very careful because he got game. And his game with your shape is going to produce another you. Well, how do you know, mama? Because I did it. Stop giving me a scripture. Give me your testimony. The way the conversation go is, sit down, son. You got to get up in the morning and work. That good stuff ain't going to come to you. Jordans don't just happen. You got to have a work ethic, character, and integrity. Don't just let me learn from your victories, but let me learn from your struggles. In order for there to be reconciliation between the generations, there must first be forgiveness. Moses, forgive Joshua. Forgive us for our arrogance and try to teach us again. Did you hear what I said? I said, forgive us for our arrogance and teach us how to pray. Teach us that when you pray, you don't just start with our need. You start by giving him glory. Teach us that when you get on your knees, you lift up hands. And before you ask him for anything, you thank him for everything. Teach me that you enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Teach me that you don't play with an iPad in church, but you pay attention to the word of God. Because there's nothing more important than the word of God going forth in the church. Teach us again. And Joshua, forgive Moses for any way they hurt you. Because when we release each other from unforgiveness, we can reconnect. When we release each other from hurt, we can reconnect. Thank you, Moses, for delivering us from Egypt. Because if it had not been for you, I couldn't take us into the promised land. Thank you, Joshua, for having the courage to finish what I started. You're not a success until you identify a successor. Uh, can I tell you a secret? The reason why the devil doesn't want the generations to get together because it's a deadly combination. Do you know what will happen if you get the wisdom of the older people with the strength of the younger people? I, oh God, I, I wish you would raise your level of expectation. If, if you're not too stuck up, bump somebody and say it's about to go down. Go ahead. Uh, if you get some older folks with wisdom uh -huh, and some younger folks with strength, we'll tear up the club. Yeah. If you get some older folks with wisdom and some younger folks folks with energy, we'll go out witnessing and we'll take a whole city in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, if you're not too mean, I need some older folks to stand up and say, I got you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I need some younger folks to stand up and say, I receive it. Uh -huh. Because God said in the last days, I feel like preaching, uh, I'll pour out my spirit. Uh, I'm going to pour it out on all flesh. And your sons and daughters